Welcome back to the fifth section of this video course. In the previous section, we took our sweet time in understanding behavior driven development. In this section, we will be getting introduced to the Selenium server and run our tests remotely. Our first video of this section will look at the introduction of Selenium server. In this video, we will get down to the basics and answer a few questions that linger around when it comes to remote testing. Why would you want to do remote testing? How do you do it? When should you do it? We will then see how a Selenium server fits the bill and explore it in more detail. Let us start with the most important question. Why? Why isn't it enough to run the browser locally and see if it works? It is enough to run the application on your local computer if you have all the browsers available. However, testing it on all the operating systems would rarely be the case. A good alternative, thus, is to run a browser remotely on another computer with the correct operating system and browser. In other words, if your website supports Safari on two different versions of macOS and you are on Windows, you still have a possibility to test it if it runs a browser remotely. This is also a way of scaling up your testing. If you can run many tests in parallel with many different types of browsers, you may be able to reduce the time it takes to test a web application. Running many tests in parallel may be significantly faster as compared to running them in serial. Now let's talk about how. You can write your test as usual with your page objects and assertions to get this done. But instead of instantiating a local browser, you will need to instantiate a remote browser. You will have to tell the remote driver where to find the remote system and the capabilities you want. The capabilities define the expected browser and operating system. Running this will either give you a browser with the wanted capabilities or an error. Then, you should execute your tests with the browser. It will probably be slower to executing it on a local browser, but it will still give you the option to execute the test using browsers that you don't have locally installed. This leads us to the last question. When should we do this? You should use Selenium Server whenever you need to implement cross-browser testing or when you must do a test with a browser that you don't have installed. For example, if you are testing a website in all preferred browsers such as Chrome, Firefox, IE and Safari, however, one image on your homepage is not showing up when it comes to Safari on OS X. Now, this is a browser-specific bug. You might have to verify whether the specific bug has been fixed on Safari on OS X, but you're using Windows as your development environment. In such a case, remote cross-browser testing would be necessary and will help you verify the bug on Safari on OS X. Selenium Server can have many slaves that it will direct the execution to. This means that it can support different operating systems and different browsers. It can also support the same operating system on different browsers. Microsoft doesn't allow you to install more than one version of Internet Explorer per Windows installation. Selenium Server can thus help you support many different versions of IE if it has access to many slaves with different Internet Explorer versions installed. This is often called cross-browser testing, testing the same things on different browsers. But then how do you do it? We must get hold of the server and run the test to check this out. Let's go ahead and download the Selenium Server from Selenium HQ. Go to the download section, we'll need the Selenium standalone server. The most recent version is 2.48.2. Let's download it. Once the download is complete, execute the Selenium server file. Let's go to the command line. The instructions on Selenium HQ say that we need to run the jar file and browse to the directory where the file is located. Type the following command java jar selenium server standalone 2.48.2.jar roll hub. The arguments say that this instance should have the role of hub. 
that we represent in the command role-hub. A hub is the reference that a web driver instance needs so that it can connect to something. Now execute the command java-jar selenium-server-standalone-2.48.2.jar-role-hub. The output shows that the hub began and is listening to incoming calls on port 4444. This is the standard port for a Selenium server. It is possible to change it, but we'll leave it to 4444 for now. GridHub is up and running. We can now open up a browser and examine what we can find at the local host colon 4444. 1. Open a browser and visit http colon slash slash localhost colon 4444 slash. 2. Observe the information in the page. We are using the grid version 2.48.0 and there is a link to a wiki page where we can find more help if we need it. Click on the More Help Here link, and you will be transferred to a GitHub page on Grid. github.com, Selenium HQ, Selenium, Wiki, Grid 2. Grid Wiki is the best site for learning and gaining more knowledge. Now, let's open a new tab. Go to localhost, colon, 4444. We can see the configuration if we click on the console link. Click on view config to see the configuration settings for our grid console. Well, that's all for this video. In this video, we saw how we can solve many questions of how and why we need to make use of the Selenium server. We then downloaded it and executed it by starting a hub. In the next video, we will start registering nodes to actually see how we can run tests on a Selenium server.